Hi, yes, I'm back for 2020, even though I've released uh, like four videos in 2020. I actually shot those in 2019. I've been on walkabout for a couple of weeks, just got back, and I've been checking out the dumpster, of course, and this is my latest dumpster find. Um, I thought there were a couple of monitors down there as well as a PC. I haven't really uh, looked at that, but it's a Core i7. I haven't picked it up yet. Here's a photo from down in the dumpster room, and I thought this was just a monitor. I uh, sort of like saw it from the side on, and I thought, oh, isn't that slim? Look at that, that's really sexy. Looks like an alloy case, oh, I'm gonna pick that up. And I picked it up, and sure enough, look at the back of it. It's a Lenovo jobby, and then I saw the sticker on the front, Core i5 7th Gen processor. It's the Lenovo Idea Center. It's one of these all-in-one PCs. Um, and not the first time I've found something like this in the dumpster, but I haven't found one this nice. What is that? Probably a 22 inch. It's not huge, but it's one of these all-in-one PCs. Obviously, got a grill down here. Can I feel some speakers down there? And this is a really sexy uh, all-in-one monitor. That's absolutely fantastic. It's got uh, USB. It's got Ethernet. It's got, oh, weird-ass power connector. I just noticed that. Yeah, oh, damn. <laughs> just started shooting this video all excited. And I don't think I have a power connector like that. Oh, it's square. Look at it. Look at that weird-ass turd. Oh, I don't like it all. Anyway, external HDMI monitor for a second monitor. Wow. Uh, 20 volts, uh, 4 amps there for those playing along at home. It's got all the requisite compliance uh, marks. I've done a video on the <laughs> compliance marks. Do I have to do another one? Anyway, that was manufactured um, 9th month 2017. Wow. Like, why would somebody throw this out? There's got to be something wrong with it, you would presume. Oh, it's still got the protective cover on the Lenovo. Beautiful. Like I bought one. And on the back as well, look at this! Oh, that's pornographic. Demonetized. So it turns out this is a Lenovo special um, with a, like a square pin in the middle and contacts top and bottom, but ah, it's bodge time. Um, so what I've got, one of these uh, leaf inserts from a single inline connector, and they've got the springy thing on there, and it just so happens to have a nice little snug fit on, I assume the top and bottom are the exact same uh, content, and I'm assuming they're ground, because look, they've used a barrel jack um, thing for center positive there, <laughs> even though it's not round. It's bloody square, bloody Lenovo. Oh, and I found that this resistor fits just fine, and it's important to use precision here, 0.005%, 100 ohms, thank you very much. And that just so happens to fit nicely into the center like that, and just be careful that doesn't short out to the chassis. Now should be able to make contact and at least power it up. And of course, if it works or I can get it repaired, um, then I, you know I'll buy a proper uh, aftermarket adapter for it. Right, so let's power this puppy up and see if she works. I got my power supply, uh, 20 volts, set it to five amp current limit. We only need four and a half, so that should be good enough for Australia. Let's go and switch the output on. Okay, we're getting just residual. So where's the power button on the back? Nope, no joy. Hold down the power button. Damn. Wah, 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 wah. Don't! Oh, I think I've goofed it. Um, <laughs> thanks to <laughs> the person on Twitter who mentioned that, uh, yeah, might need a pull down resistor on this. As it turns out, um, the center pin is not power. It's the two outer pins on there are positive and negative, and the center pin is for a power detection resistor that you've got to, like, put it to... Is that even, like, is that symmetrical? Like, that? no, it must only plug in one way. Anyway, it, it's dumb. Bloody Lenovo. At, like, you would assume, like, because it says up here, like, center positive. I put positive in the center, but this is not what... I'm seeing when I Google Lenovo power adapter pinout. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is probe these two outer contacts and see if they're shorted. Oh, they are. Okay, so that is center positive. I stand corrected. So that image that I've got seems to be incorrect. You can't, unless there's a dead short inside there, which I doubt, you can insert that either way, I think. By the looks of it, I can't see how that thing's keyed. 
So yeah, that makes sense that they're both out of ground. So that's okay. And just double checking that I don't have one. No, bloody Murphy. And if I check between the HDMI shell, yep, they're both ground. So those two outer pins are definitely ground and that center one should be positive. But let me measure that. Yeah, 42 meg. Go the other way. Mm. And the good thing about having the HDMI connector there like that, I can just plug that in, use that outer shell. So center pin, outer shell. <laughs> let me try that again, just in case it wasn't making uh, contact with the pin somehow. Let's do this one more time. No, it's dead, Jim. Ah, pays to have a second look. Here it is. I went down there and thoughtfully they dumped this out. And there it is. There's the Lenovo adapter. I should have had a better look down there. Um, <laughs> the power connector on it. Anyway, let's give this a burl. Because there could be some smarts going on in that adapter. Oh, I can hear something. It's got a little fan. It's got a little... It's... Look at this. Nothing wrong with the screen. It's boot in. Oh! Is there something wrong? Like, is it touchscreen as well? Oh. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. No, no, oh, no, touchscreen. Touchscreen works. Yep. Wow, can't believe somebody would toss this out. It's not that old. Uh, the set i5-7200U uh, processor in it, it's got a benchmark of like 4500. It's still pretty good. Well, maybe there's some intermittent problem. You know, it overheats and shuts down or or something like that. But um, anyway, it does have a uh, password access, but uh, yeah, I should be able to bypass that. And I just checked on eBay and there's tons of parts available for these motherboards and back panels and fans and all sorts of stuff. Um, fantastic. And I found one like a brand new, like new old stock for uh, 780 bucks. Okay, to bypass our Windows password here, let's switch it on. Then we wait, twiddle our thumbs, twiddle our thumbs until we get the little spinny Windows icon. And then press the button and wait for it to power down. And do that again. A second time, power it on, wait for that again, and once again hold down the button as soon as the spinny icon appears, wait for it to shut down, and then wait a couple of seconds, and let's repower it for the third time, and the third time we should get lucky, it should go into system recovery mode, please wait, ha <laughs> ha, ta-da, we're in system recovery mode, now we can bypass the password, hmm. See advanced repair options. Ta-da! Okay, we'll go troubleshoot. Then we'll go advanced options. Okay, we want more recovery options. We want system image re Okay, we have to forgot your password or don't see your account. And then we can restart. Okay, I went through that sequence again. And it said repairing your PC, diagnosing your PC. And we should be able to skip the user account. Let's go into the advanced options again. Troubleshoot, advanced options, system image recovery. Ta-da! And now we can actually, let's cancel this, and we can actually select a system image next, and we can actually now get in there and select the uh, file system. So we will get access to the file system and we can rename a few things. Okay, so what we want now is advanced like this, and we want to install a driver, but we're not actually going to install a driver. We've got access, bingo, to our file system. Fantastic. So we're looking for a file called utilman. I've actually got a mouse now, so make this a bit easier. Okay, utilman is not in there. So we go back, and by the way, we can actually access uh, different drives here, so you can uh, get access to um, any of the file system. Hang on. So it wasn't in boot system 32. Well, let's go into Windows system 32. Util man, that's the one we want. We want to right click, we want to rename that, and you want to rename that to anything, you know, Util man 1 or something. Doesn't matter what you rename it to. And we want to refresh that. Util man 1, fantastic. Now, what we want to go up to is to find our command CMD. There it is, CMD, and then we want to rename that Util man. Okay, command has been renamed Util man. Refresh that. We now have Utilman. Okay, so what we want to do is cancel that, cancel that, cancel that. 10, exit and continue to Windows 10 and it will reboot and get access to uh, the command 
prompt now. You should get access to ease of access down here and bingo, ease of access brings up our command prompt. Ta-da! utilman.exe, which is now the uh, command prompt window. So we've got full command prompt access. Now we can bypass it. Helps if I spell it right, doesn't it? Bloody one, so I should find a keyboard and plug it in. Now we just want to uh, reset the username that we want to do. So net user, uh, user, and then the actual username and asterisk. And password for the new user. Um, you can type in any password you want. We'll just uh, put enter. So enter will be the new password. Bingo. Whoop. Aha, uh -huh. if we get an error 8646, it means that they're not using a local Windows account, they're using a Microsoft account. And uh, recently Microsoft have forced people to use a Microsoft account for Windows 10 Home, which is what we're using here apparently, so uh, bummer. But it turns out if we just type in netplwiz, um, then we can actually get up here and uh, add uh, different accounts to log in. Beauty. And if we disable the password here, um, bingo, we can get the username and password. So what do now is add my own Dave account. There I am. And uh, then change that to local group administrators. So I run netplwiz. I am now an administrator. Beauty. And bingo, I chose Dave down here. I missed that. And we're signing in as Dave. Come on. You can do it. Ha <laughs> ha. And we're reset up. Beauty, we're in like Flynn. But that was a bit of an effort though because uh, this used a Microsoft account for a login. So the usual way to bypass this didn't work. So I had to hack around a bit. Couldn't really find a uh, proper thing online. So I just winged it. So we don't want any of that rubbish. So we accept and ta-da, we're in like Flynn. We now have a Windows 10 PC, but it looks like I've been using this for quite some time now and it's, uh, yeah, it, it's just working a treat, so it doesn't seem to be any sort of uh, thermal issue. Does it get hot on the back? Nah, not really. So uh, a little bit warm on the side there, but that's where the main processor board must be. But <laughs> what a, that's a fantastic score from the dumpster. Unbelievably good. And I just removed that other pesky user, and we've only got Dave left. So, yeah, it's like a bought one. Uh, let's plug in the interwebs. I just want to uh, just reboot this once to make sure that uh, that user is gone, Ski, and only Dave remains. Dave, just a moment. Thank you. And we're straight in. None of that password rubbish. And for those uh, curious, that seems to be a particularly uh, clean machine. There's really nothing on it. Um, I just uninstalled Norton was installed, so I'll uninstall that. But apart from that, yeah, um, it's it's been wiped. And this is what we have for those playing along at home. 2.5 gig i5 7200U running at uh, just over a volt, uh, 1.1 volts there. Um, at 15 watts maximum, so you know it's no beast, but it's like it's still like four and a half thousand pass mark. It's still pretty good. There's the cache, main board, there we go. Firmware's a bit out of date. Maybe we can get a uh, later one. It's got a gig of memory, that'll do. For those playing along at home. And graphics, uh, it's Intel HD Graphics 620, so it's just built into the uh, uh, CPU, so that's all right. Let's compare it with a Ryzen Threadripper, shall we? And there you go, use that as a reference there. It's 80% uh, because it's not multi, uh, I guess it's got more cores. Um, but the uh, the single core is only 80% of a uh, Threadripper 1950X there, using this particular benchmark, you know, <laughs> your mileage may vary. Try and keep it very concise for Speakers are a little bit tinny, but uh, there you go. A day got dual Dave and it's face tracking on Dave too. <laughs> so yeah, a little bit tinny for that, but uh, that's what you expect. Oh, usable speakers in it. Nice. Oh, all right. Very quick tear down. A couple of screws on the bottom here. Not sure. What's this? Oh, oh, what's that? Oh, there's extra. Ah, look at that. There's extra USB ports. Oh, wow. That's nice. These are USB 3s too. Oh, that's that's beautiful. Oh, Bobby Dazzler. Hats off to that. Oh, it's a camera. Look at that. That's your pop out camera with two extra USBs. Ah, oh, NSA spy enabled. Well, that's actually quite nice. There's a little uh, 
catch there and then it's just got plastic clips for the rest of it and we're in like Flynn there you go uh 256 gig a solid state drive you know that's okay I think there's 40 gig free something like that might be able to clean it up a bit more you can always uh replace that little tiny fan there yeah the thermals aren't great with this uh tiny little fan it's all shooting out the top here um you know it is uh temperature controlled so it does uh cycle with uh, various modes and stuff like that. I've got some shielding on here. That'd be the main uh, processor. There's our power switch. Uh, oh, there's our uh, Wi-Fi antenna. These are our little uh, speakers down here. Oh, they're little rubber baby buggy bumper compliant mount. That's nice. Nice attention to detail. I've got two of those. Another one over there. There's the mechanism for the camera and the USBs. Nice. There you go, that was easy to get off. We just took off the uh, screws, four screws here for the stand mount. And uh, we've got access to the main processor down in there. So there you go, there she is down there. That's it. Uh, that's, you yeah, know, none of that socket rubbish. And uh, heat pipe running out over to the fan over there. Not the most efficient thing, but you know, you've got to get uh, uh, the form factor down somehow. And uh, there you go. Up RAM upgradable there. Not sure to how how much. Uh, might be able to put 16 in there perhaps. But uh, yeah, we've only got the one slot. And there's our little uh, Wi-Fi module with the coax buggering off down under there around to our Wi-Fi antenna. And well, that's all she wrote. Not that exciting, is it? Um, battery backup and like it's it's 2017 model. Fantastic. So yeah, I'm not going to tear it down any further than that. It's not warranted. It's a beauty. So it's a very nice all-in-one uh, design there. And what felt like um, an alloy case is actually, um, yeah, ABS. Thank you very much for playing. <laughs> There's all the marks for those playing. ABS plus uh, PETs. So yeah, I'm not going to write home to my mum about it, but like top score. And I, I assume there's no like long-term reliability issues, but there could be. You know, I've had things uh, scored from the dust before and they seem to work when I get them in the lab and then I start using them for a few days and they have yeah, come a gutter. Um, so anyway, I'll leave it running for a while. Like I burn it in, I might do run a uh, memory and uh, CPU uh, burn-in thing just to see how it's going. And uh, yeah, maybe I can even upgrade it if I find a decent uh, use for it. So I could even take it home. Um, it could be a kid's PC or uh, maybe Mrs. EV blog might like it. We'll see. So there you have it. That is a very nice Lenovo all-in-one touchscreeny PC thing. And there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it at all. It was just dumped they upgraded or whatever, it's a couple of years old. And yes, I really do find this stuff in the dumpster. I have to keep saying this because my building is in like a like a big industrial estate complex and it serves like a hundred, the one dumpster room serves like, you know, 80 or a hundred different companies or whatever. And, and people just like toss this sort of stuff out because it's surplus to requirements. They got some new shiny whiz bag thing and they like, <laughs> they couldn't even be bothered selling on eBay. Yes, you would have easily got many hundreds of dollars for this on eBay, but they just couldn't be bothered. It's not worth their time. So they tossed it out. And well, <laughs> that's a score for me. So that's, uh, that's one of the best dumpster scores I've gotten in terms of PCs. It's no big uh, beast, but um, yeah, like, the fact that it's in a brilliant case, it's a touch screen. Shame it's got a bit of a fan in it, a little bit of fan wear, so it's not completely silent. But at the moment, actually, I'm barely able to hear that at the moment. So anyway, that is a huge score. Very happy with that. Don't know what I'm going to use it for. I mean, I could sell it on eBay, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. No, it's, it, it's too good. I really like it. It's very sexy. So I'll keep that for uh, something. So anyway, if you like that video, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, you can discuss in the comments down below. And please subscribe to me over on library.tv. That's not the word library. It's L-B-R-Y dot TV. Always linked in down below. I've got like 4,400 subscribers. I'm like the ninth biggest channel in the world. Woo! Oh, we added a new feature to Windows. This could take a few minutes. Oh, it's updating bloody Windows. Anyway, yeah. catch you next time. Hello.